Hello and welcome to the MHG podcast. As usual, life could be a little bit miserable, life could be a little bit dark. So we're here to bring you a little bit of joy and a little bit of light because here is my shining light. It's Stu. Hi Brad, how you doing Stu? Not bad, thank you. Yeah, yeah, nice way to start. That'll do me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've still still can't quite nail the. This is going to be the same intro every week, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, we get in there. We're about two thirds of the way through a, a, a same intro every week, so you know. Yeah, well, you can't beat a bit of variety. Yeah. No, I don't, it depends because if you if you're the BBC, you're looking at variety from the eighties. You might be going, ah, uh, uh, there's no one from the variety sector left anymore that we can actually put on TV. <laughs> We've actually, got yeah. to start making new programs. Um, I want to be. I want to be like more on the David Tennant side of of, of entertainment. No, oh, definitely. Yeah, what an excellent guy he's a good he is. Egg. He is. He really is. Yeah, he really is a good egg. And like, even if they try and paint him as. Did you see the thing with? Oh, what's her name? The Kelly, Adol Jones, or the one who's like Posey Parker or Parker Posey, whatever she wants to call herself. Oh, not, not, yeah. Yeah, not the not the fantastic actress who stars in like uh, Christopher Guest films because she's actually a good person. Um, uh, uh, that's Posey Parker, is it? No, the other know, way around. But... That's Parker Posey. Yeah, Parker Posey. Yeah. yeah, she's boss. Posey Parker's a dickhead. That's the one. Um, yeah, try claiming David Tennant wore a, a a badge that was inviting children to be molested by trans people or something, and it's just like just have a day off. Not David Tennant. David Tennant doesn't do that. And he's savvy enough that he knows how to sue your ass as well. So, why? I know. Fancy going after him. That's disgraceful. That really is. It's just like, it's it's David Tennant. I don't even like Doctor Who, but I love David Tennant. I think he's just boss. And you're not wrong, because he is. He's he's a lovely man, you know. Uh, It's not often I watch a TV programme and sort of root for the villain, but when I watched... um, Oh, what was that Marvel thing he was in? Jessica Jones. Uh, Jessica Jones, yeah. yeah. I was like, go on. You you, you manipulate that woman <laughs> for your own for your own <laughs> for your own purposes. Go on, David. That's David for you. Go you go for yeah. it. Yeah. Go on. He can he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, he, to be honest, he does come across as a really, really nice fella. And uh yes. yeah, the whole thing that they're doing with Doctor Who is is really good, really inclusive and you know, it's just a big f u to all of the all the re- weirdo right wingers at the moment, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Doctor Who, the original trans person. Well, exactly. You know, it's, there's no surprise that it's he's such a, a favourite in the queer community. Not just him, yes. but you know them. So yeah, brilliant. I, yeah, I yeah, it's like it's a weird one because I've never thought I'd be talking about Doctor Who. I don't like Doctor Who. I've never really got into it. I've seen the odd thing here and there, and I get the fandom, but I understand why it's so beloved. When you when I've seen things and I've seen sort of like nigh on all the people who are involved with it seem decent people on the whole. Um, you know, Billy yeah. Piper's the the decent fox. Um, yeah, as opposed to Lawrence, but there you go. Oh, yeah. Because uh, he's been suspended, which is fun. All of that stuff was fun. Yeah, see him and Dan Wooden get kicked up the arse. Yes. Um, well, I, I don't get what's happened to the free speech channel though. Why, why? I don't get why the free speech channel was suspended. Their, their, their people. <laughs> I don't get All it. Right, right. Apparently, there are consequences. Know. Who would have thought? No. Oh. No. Um, I know none of our listeners will be doing this, but don't drag Billy Piper into that knobheads things it's not her fault um nah. and she doesn't like him you know it's unfortunate she was younger things happened and he probably put on a different persona back then to her she's probably regrets being with him but doesn't regret the children doesn't mean it's her fault for him being what he is now the flag burning yeah. knobhead <laughs> precisely yeah, precisely Talk- talking of flag burning knobheads oh god here we go go on I don't know, Jim Ryan's leaving uh, Sony. Oh, uh, yeah. Jim Ryan. So, do you know what Sony make? What do they make? Video games. Video games, that's right. Disclaimer, Jim Ryan's probably not a flag-burning knobhead um, <laughs> for legal reasons. I just couldn't think of anything else that was happening in games at the moment that I could do a link with. Um, so apologies, Jim Ryan. <laughs> Maybe Sony can make games that aren't third-person 
massive graphically impressive adventures anymore. Maybe they could be a bit more experimental again. That that's what I'll say about that. Show what we've been playing, Stu. <laughs> you sound like you've had enough of yourself. That's a shame. <laughs> yeah, I, I've I've had enough of myself. I don't I don't know where I'm going. I don't know <laughs> how many areas of litigation I've put us in in the first five minutes or what. So you know, tell me about video games. Stu. <laughs> what have you been playing? Fewer fewer than normal, but you know, still enough. Yeah, I've been playing a game called Dungeon Golf. Which is pretty much as you'd expect, really. It's golf in a dungeon, but it's not like because obviously you know dungeons traditionally they're kind of low ceilinged, so you couldn't you have to play your five aside rules if you're playing footy, and and if you're playing golf, you can't be doing your full kind of four and like hitting it with like a big club and and you know getting a lot of air. So it's it's basically mini golf. It's like crazy golf, you know that kind of thing. And mm-hmm. the the kind of twist, the wrinkle on it all is that you're, because it's the dungeon, it's all dungeon and dragon kind of themed. So, you, you know, there's skeletons and there's heroes and there's you know, monsters and there's treasure chests and all that caper. Um, it's frogs and minotaurs. That is, yeah. yeah, yes, exactly. So, you know, that's what they should have called it, frogs and minotaurs. They should, yeah. <laughs> Fungins and flagons or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, no, not that. Something else. Something better. Think of something better and put that in in place of that. Um, so yeah, it's basically mini golf with a kind of Dungeons and Dragons theme. The graphics look like Maximo. If anyone's old enough to remember that game <laughs> from decades yep. ago, and yeah, so with it being like mini golf and with there being enemies and being like. Trixie bits and portals, teleporters and, you know, holes in the ground that you can fall into. It's kind of like a bit of a fertile playground for like, for mini golf type stuff, you know. It's not just your regular kind of, you know, King Kong or a windmill or whatever, you know, kind of at the end of the thing. Um, so the theme is, is pretty good and it's kind of structured with there's like lots of challenges. There's, there's a big heavy emphasis on multiplayer and co-op and you know competitive and everything which is you know quite quite good because these things when you're playing on your own can get pretty dull pretty fast um nice focus really uh so yeah so uh, is it any good well from what i've played of it it's okay um the the only thing that i find is like all the stuff that you'd expect is quite nice so the the visuals are quite nice you know they're not earth shattering but they're they're pleasant enough and they carry the theme and you know the courses are all right they're not too bad you know they've got lots of stuff like you'd expect like i say so you've got enemies trying to hit the ball out of the way or trying to smack you and you've got walls that are moving and traps and you know all that kind of stuff so you know fair enough good good enough um the only thing is that I don't find the the actual action of hitting the ball very nuanced or very fun. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, so it's got a kind of it's got like a pay. It's got a because it's because you can't get any flight on the ball unless you hit an obstacle. Because you can't get a flight on the ball, it's it's all you know you're hitting it along the ground and it's you adjust your power and you your swing, but. I it, it, don't know, it just doesn't feel very connective. It, it It's just kind of, oh, I'm pressing a button and I'm pressing a button again kind of a thing. And as that's the thing that you're doing most of the time, it needs to be quite arcadey and, and, and grip you. But I haven't really yeah. been gripped by that. So, yeah, that, that's where I am with it at the moment anyway. It's, yeah, I think you're right there. Um, we must clarify it is early access as well, so they are still working on the game. Um and on that point, I think it's a very feature complete early access game, which is really good to see. I think we're really over that hump of early access games that were coming out at one point. Um, but yeah, no, I'm with you. The problem with a mini golf based game is that it's essentially still mini golf, um, yeah. which yeah. isn't that nuanced. You know, you go down your you know, Blackpool Pleasure Beach mini golf course or South End on Sea or, or something like that. You hit a ball a few times and yeah, you, you know, it's just, there's it's, it's very little nuance to it. Um, and it's very hard to turn that into a video game. Yet, quite often, there's loads of these games, loads of mini golf games um, for some reason. I think, 
I've enjoyed what I've played of it so far. I've I, I've only played little bits because again it's early access and I want to see how it turns out as the full thing. Um, I think a lot of the enjoyment on this comes from the puzzle aspects of the dungeons. I like the idea of uh, like in dungeons where you get a target, can you get what is essentially a hole in none? Um, because if you kill a monster on route by hitting it, you get a stroke back. And, you know, the ultimate goal there is to, can you get a a hole in one or even minus one or minus two or, or something like that. Yeah. So it adds a puzzle element to it, which I like, but I don't think the puzzle elements at the moment are quite tight enough to carry it. Um, and I, I, I'm with you. It, there's something there. I think the presentation's lovely. I think the aesthetic and everything with it's lovely. I think the idea is really good. I think it just needs some work on some very key areas, such as some dungeon layout. And maybe is there something they can add to those mechanics just to maybe make them a bit more fun? Whether that could even just be, can you do like a top-down look at a course or something like that that allows you to plan better maybe or or just get something from it because it just feels a little bit aimless in terms of where you're going at present and it's yeah it's lacking that little something but yeah. there's something there that makes me want to root for this and hope it does like it finds what it needs and does well yeah yeah i um i I don't know if you've seen, but there there is a top down view, but you can't play in it. It's it's like a map, um, mm. but it's it's not it's not brilliant to be quite honest with you. It's very simple, uh, a bit yeah. heavily. I, I find the colours a, a bit heavy. You know, it's not very well contrasted. I think you need to make it a bit more basic um, to help with yes. that. I would say, but yeah, I agree with you. I think it's got potential if they can just clinch that kind of feeling of impact when you when you're taking your shot. Because, like you say, it's such a basic game comparative to full golf that that you really need to like have that core arcadey bit where the ball, the, you know, the the stick hits the ball, <laughs> has to be really good fun. Yeah, yeah. So let's get. Hopefully, they'll get there. Yeah, and the one thing I did want to ask you, and this I, I, I was unsure about this. So much of it, I don't mean this in a derogatory term to the developers of what they were doing, but a lot of it feels like maybe this started life as a game that was going to be developed for mobile first. It's kind of got that something that makes me think it was going to be a mobile game, and they've then switched focus to make it a full price. Well, not a full price, but a, you know, a paid for steam experience pc experience that doesn't have all the microtransaction bullcrap that you would usually get in a mobile game is that just me or do you feel there's a little bit of that there that it's it kind of shifted development at some point well i hadn't even thought of that but that that's actually a really good point it could well have done that because like you say that aesthetic is very very like uh, a lot of those mobile games, yeah, and it's something that you could imagine doing on on a screen rather than with with your pad. So yeah, it could well. Maybe they just got a load of investor funding, and it was enough to you know go forward with a, a full release rather than a free to play. Yeah, yeah. yeah and to be honest, I think uh, it's one of those. I sort of like when I, when I look at it as well, when I, I double checked all this as well. Fifteen quid, I think, is not an egregious price point either for the content that's there at early access and what they're saying they're going to be adding. Um, personally, I don't think that's a bad price at all because I, I think you could get if you're into mini golf or you're into arcadey games like this, um, and you enjoy the the general loop of it. I think there's a lot of good game there worth that fifteen quid as well. So I think they've nailed that price point as well, which is which is good. So I'm intrigued to see how it goes uh, when it hits a full release at some point when that is who knows yeah yeah that that um that thing of the online play you know play that that might have been the thing that tipped it into having a good funding round and being able to be a full game because yes. yeah because you, you can't you've got to charge 15 quid for something that's going to be fully hosted and you know supported so yeah yeah fair play to them fingers crossed eh yeah and if it does prove up we'll we'll have to have a round see how it is how about see if it's any Funner? Is fun of a word? I don't know. No. It's more fun, <laughs> more, fun. more enjoyable. Whether that, whether you kind of forget that that basicness when you play with a friend or Stu. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and I hated enemy, but who was actually online at that moment? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, but yeah, there's definitely there's something there. Not quite there yet, but hey, it's already better than most of last week's game, so it's got that it's going a, for it. It's a winner on that call, on that score. Definitely. It is indeed. Uh, best bit about last week was that title, <laughs> Sophie's Choice title. That, that was, was good. That was that's the best bit about the podcast. The games were pretty poor. <laughs> Um, anyway, moving on, um, a game I picked up very, very recently and got a code for that I want to just chat about because it's just lovely. Um, and it's called Paleo Pines, which is essentially, um, a farming sim exploration animal crossing style-ish game, um, with dinosaurs in it. Um, nice. basically, yep, you live in this, this cozy world where you pick your character um you bit like you make them look how you want to look and there's plenty of options for character building in there and outfits and you basically go to start life on a farm and you got to build the farm except you have basically friendly dinosaurs that live in this world yeah um and you could befriend them and they help you fix up your farm and help you like cultivate crops and all the other things you expect in a um in a farming simulator type game and it's just lovely um it's not um you know it, it's not i'm gonna beat stardew valley it's not gonna be animal crossing or or anything like that but yeah it's just it's cozy and lovely and cute and the dinosaurs are boss you know they're they're not gone for overly realistic looking dinosaurs but they've got um, they've got like enough of a look about them that you can tell they are based on other dinosaurs, even if they're not exact one to ones. And they've got all lovely personalities, almost like cats and dogs in the way their personalities are and things like that. Um, it's a lovely pastelish aesthetic to everything. Um, just bright, colourful. Um, I think it's aimed at kids more than anything, but. I, I put it on and just went, oh my God, this is beautiful and lovely and I can't wait to play some more. Um, it's like fairly in-depth when it comes to the farming side of stuff. Uh, you know, you have to do things, you have to do things to help make the dinosaurs, keep the dinosaurs happy because part of it is creating a dinosaur sanctuary. Um, and you interact with different locals. You can buy things, expand, etc., etc. I say I've only put a couple of hours into it, but I can see myself being one of those games like Animal Crossing that I go back to for half an hour daily just because it's just a lovely world to be in. And I've got not much else to say about it in terms of all like the mechanics and everything because I'm so early in, but I kind of put it on and just went, oh, this is going to be, I've got a feeling this could be like quite cheap. Or not nasty, but just kind of like so me too. Not me too, that's the one phrase. Um, <laughs> um, so been there, done that. It's seen an Animal Crossing and went, oh yeah, that, that cover looks nice. Let's try and build a game of it. That's honestly how I thought it would come across. Put it on and it's just, yeah, just something so nice about it that grabs you. And I think it'll be one that if you've got family, if you've got kids... Sit down, play it with them because it's it's almost set up for that that level of play, um, and yeah, it's just lovely, lovely little dinosaur ranching, farming sim, animal crossing, life sim type thing about community, friendship, and yeah, stuff. It's just beautiful. Oh, lovely. Um, I don't suppose there's a Switch version, is there? Because Mrs. There Mrs. Stew, maybe. Would, Mrs. Stew would like that. I reckon she's obsessed with dinosaurs. Let me just check my notes. I am having a look at my notes that I made before we started. Uh, nice. I, yes. Nice. Yes. Nice. There is a Switch version. Um, it's got its initial release date as June 19th. Now, it wasn't June. Well, at least on Steam, it wasn't June 19th. On Steam, it was the 26th of September. Um, it may have been on Switch before that. I don't know. But it came out on Steam the other day. Uh, but it is on Switch or coming to Switch or one of the two. Um, so, yeah. Um, Very cool. Tw 20 quid on Steam. Again, if you're into Animal Crossing style games or, or that or farming 
ranching type games, you know what your value is going to be out of this. You know, if you was willing to pay 50 quid for Animal Crossing, 20 quid for a, a, a game that's got a different aesthetic to it, and dinosaurs, I think, yeah, absolutely fine. Steam Deck verified as well. So if you wanted to buy a, her own Steam Deck, Stu, you could do that. Ah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll get it on Switch for 20 quid or something, even yeah. if there's a bit of a Switch tax on it, she can have that. She's not having a Steam Deck. Nah, too Ugh. right, too right. No, the, re- the reason I was so <laughs> abrupt there is because um, <laughs> Mr. Stu only plays um, one game. So one normally mm. one game at a time um, and for several years. So since we've been together, and we've been together 18 years, she's played uh, Tetris, uh, Pac-Man Championship Edition, yep. and Mr. Driller. And that's it. She's been playing Mr. Driller now for, I think, about four years. So <laughs> we'd. Hey, she's still. Hey, she's still only got a hundred meters down. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that she's rubbish. It's just that she's addicted. No. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm jealous of that. I wish I could be that person sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got like nearly two and a half thousand games on my Steam account alone because, uh, yeah, I need. I need, I need the goodness. I, I need it's like crack, actual crack, and I need it. Um, I'm kind of the same. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm jealous of Mel. Really, really. Uh, <laughs> well, no, because she's married to me. So you know that that. Uh, no, that's why I'm not the gaming stuff separate. That's why I'm jealous. Jeff. Oh, I see. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Well, there's only one of me to go around. I'm afraid. I know. We could become a thruple. <laughs> thruple. Yeah. <sighs> so much jealousy involved in that though oh, <laughs> not worth it uh, if you're the right sort of okay that's a different conversation for another day I think if you're the right sort of person I think it works uh, but yeah it's, I think you've really got to be the right sort of people for that to work um, mm, yeah. I'm not trying to convince you that we should become a couple obviously that's a bit for the show oh of course yeah we'll we'll talk later yeah we'll, we'll talk I think, later. He, I, think yeah. he bought, yeah. I think he bought that anyway yeah, yeah. 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 that's that yeah, yeah. That's that, okay. <laughs> um, and yeah that that's absolutely brilliant now the complete opposite of that not in terms of quality uh, but in terms of aesthetic and stuff like that and cuteness uh, the other game I've been playing which I can now talk about because I've been playing for a couple of weeks is a Lamplight the, the Lamplighters League to get the title correct okay which is I think this sort of thing you don't mind this, this sort of game it's a turn based strategy RPG uh, because I yeah. know you've played a couple of them. I can't remember which one it was that you played a couple of years ago that was really good. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do like tactical RPGs and um, turn-based stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, Lamp Lighters League, the hook on it, and we'll get into the like the, uh, the the mechanics of it in a second. Is it's kind of like a um, a caper. Um, like a film noir style caper where like like a, like a band of misfits like all come together and they've all got unique abilities and there's a this mystery going on and this like, this globe trotting adventure that they go on and it's kind of got this like oldie style 50s 60s style movie aesthetic to it um it's just yeah it's just like set i, I want to say it feels like at times it's set like but like, towards the end of like the second world war or something like that uh but it's yeah it's, it's really 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 like interesting story with really cool interesting characters and the aesthetic is just i say it's brilliant it's like a noir caper um and it's done this thing where and this is something i really like now with a lot of turn-based games um jagged alliance does it uh really really well um and it's kind of got this where it's real time until you then go into combat and it goes turn based. Um even Mario Rabbids does it as well. <laughs> um and I really like that that you can explore most of the world. You can even take like kill characters or or take down characters in real time before going into turn base. You can go to turn base whenever you want. Um and you can really strategize. Um uh, it's difficult. Um, it's, it's definitely not easy um, and I've played these turn-based combat games before where I feel like the game's trying to make things horrible for me it's trying to make me fail whereas this I feel like when I fail a mission 
it's my fault or I've misplayed, it's not the game being a dick or going, hey, you've got a 99% chance of shooting this person at point black range in the face. Guess what happened? You hit the 1%. It doesn't feel like that XCOM style. Um, it feels fairly balanced in terms of percentages and, and of hits and, and stuff like that. It doesn't do anything special in terms of the turn-based combat. Um, I, I've seen it all before. You, you know, you, in Jagged Alliance, I've played that style of combat before. In um, Gears Tactics, which I think is a very underrated um, turn-based game, I think you, you've you played that and really enjoyed it as well. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't do anything different that you've not seen in any of those. Um, I think uh, what does a lot of the heavy lifting here and I don't mean this in a negative way, is honestly the setting, the aesthetic, um, the story, the, 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 the acting that goes in, like the voice the voice acting that goes into it. Um, it just really drags you along. And the abilities in it, the unique abilities, and this is something I struggled with in turn-based games before, is I'm not quite sure what the term, what the abilities actually, how they play off against each other, or why this, like, I need to sometimes look at a character and go, oh, that's definitely a bruiser, that's definitely going to be a sneaky character, that's definitely going to be someone who's good at ranged combat, and you kind of got to really look into their stats and attributes, and that loses me, whereas this, you go straight away, you've got, um, you look at the characters, and when it says to you, oh, this character's really good at sneaking, and you look at their portrait, you kind of go, I see what they've done there. They look like a bit of an, ur not, not an urchin, but um, do you know, like those old, those old films where it'll be like, there's the mysterious French guy. Um, yeah. And he's the one who's really good at sneaking and lock picking and stuff like that. Or he's just like, you kind of look at that character. And that's what you get. It's not gone for stereotypes. I'm not saying it's like, oh, no, it's going overly like um, racist or anything like that. But it's got that look that you saw in the old films um, where, where they'd all come together. So when you'd watch um, A Dirty Dozen or something like that, and they, they look like they're their unique abilities or the how that they look like how their characters are written. This is what you get here and it's really, really, really good. So your bruisers and stuff like that are big, burly people. Um and the abilities are fun. So you've got some that come do repeatable abilities. So there's a character early on who could rush someone from behind and knock them out. Um, you can use that um, as many times you want once it's recharged but you've got another character for example who can throw an electric bomb and you can throw it in puddles and it attracts the enemy and they'll go into the enemy and they'll get electrocuted and if there's enough there you might be able to then trigger a chain reaction so you might be able to then because of the electrocution it might blow up a red barrel and if there's another character enemy character next to that red barrel they will also then die so you can trigger things but he that character has a finite amount of bombs because they can only carry a finite amount and you need to restock them as you're going so it adds that balance that you can go right how much can i abuse this character compared to this one to get through this scenario and it doesn't punish you for wanting to avoid combat as well in fact it encourages it at points where it goes look at this point if you could just focus on these to get to the end of this level that's all you need to do. If Don't worry about those. If you worry about those, they're going to absolutely wipe you out and destroy you. And the structure of it, I said, it's difficult and I've lost many times. I've had to restart many times. Like, levels, not the entire game or anything. All comes together really, really well. The bits in between where you do the, the ex commy bit um, of levelling up characters, um, getting mission briefings, building your squad upgrading abilities all that kind of things there and it's deep but simplified so again i've played xcom and you kind of that almost like a base building thing going on between levels in xcom really i was like and yeah that blows my mind that's two separate games don't do that to me this is a lot more simplified but has that depth again like you'd expect in something like gears tactics but again, I think it's kind of honed it in a bit more that it doesn't even feel as overwhelming as Gears Tactics can get in that, that scenario. And yeah, absolutely outstanding. 
outstanding. I've just loved every moment of this game so far. Um, and I want to get to the end because it's like the whole ethos, the whole thing over it is it's like it's this countdown and you're in a race to prevent doomsday. Um, that's kind of the overall structure to it. And it, you can feel the danger as you go. And yeah, I'm intrigued to see how this goes. And it's something I've not really had in a turn-based game like this before, where I actually care about the story. It's just like I'm going from mission to mission for the sake of going to the mission to mission in other games. This, no, they've nailed the storytelling of it absolutely wonderfully. And yeah, I think this is going to be a bit of a surprise hit this year. Nice. So on Steam, it's down as the 3rd of October release. So yeah. Yeah, not embargoed or anything. I'm not breaking embargo. Oh, okay. No, embargo's <laughs> up on Friday. We record Thursday. This doesn't go up until Saturday. I am safe. Nice. Good. No, it looks really cool. Yeah, no, that looks like it, it will feel a right good niche for people as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it comes on uh, Game Pass if, you, if you're if you a bit worried about oh. dropping 40 notes on it. Um, and again, I think that's again, we're looking at 40 notes. It's not even a full price game these days, is it? 40 quid? Nope. Um, no, it ain't. No, uh, what's full price nowadays? Seventy. It is, um, yeah. So you know, days gone by. I would have gone oh, forty quid for a game like this. It's uh, you might need, to think, but we're looking at yeah, that's a normal double A price these days, mid tier price. Um, and there's plenty if you're into these sort of games. Um, yeah, you're gonna love this. If you're not sure, it's on Game Pass. So give it a little go on Game Pass first. Yeah, if you need to. But yeah, I just, yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant sleeper hit. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just before we, we move on to anything else, I just remembered when you we were talking before about, you know, games that um, my wife's played. Um, we I've played another game this week. Well, not technically this week. But oh, I don't know when it is. Is this for adult ears only? No, not this time. No, 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 no. No, no toys involved. Um, we <laughs> <laughs> so we we had a day's holiday. We were just like we stayed overnight down in Barmouth, we were, and uh, it was a lovely place. And they've got an arcade that actually has some games in it, which is nice. And they had the Walking Dead arcade game, which you would you know probably f- normally fairly rightly think, oh God, what's that like? But it's actually really good. I really enjoyed it. So it's like a light gun game. Like it's like a sit a sit down cab, and it's like uh, it's covered over like the Jurassic Park one, and it's got these great big crossbow things, and you you pull the trigger to fire your arrows, and well bolts, uh, and you have a big kind of crank thing on the top of it to reload it, and you have to get headshots to beat the zombies. So. Yeah, it's really nice. it's really cool. It's dead good fun. Um, it's one of those that you know wouldn't survive outside the arcade because it's too simplistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with with that specific peripheral and, and that cabinet, um, it yeah, it's really excellent fun. Really enjoyed it. Which is what the arcades are about. You got it. Having stuff that you can't replicate at home. Well, that's right. <laughs> um, and it's a shame this isn't Sega. I've just had a look here and gone, they've missed the trick by not having House of the Walking Dead. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because that's looking at the vi- the graphics of it, uh, not the graphics, the screenshots, sorry. That's exactly what I'm getting is House of the Dead vibes. Yes. Um, yeah. and, and all, all, all the right ways as well. It's like House of the Dead crossed with Borderlands in the visuals. Yeah, a little bit. It's not um, cell shaded though. It's just you know, regular kind of. Yeah, but, no, kind of, but it's, yeah. Bit, it's some brightness to it. And the, uh, the UI looks a bit... Um, Borderlandsy as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but oh, I'm gonna look out for that. Yeah, keep. Uh, keep how much out. is it a play? It was a quid where I was, which is really good. Oh, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. That's not bad at all. Yeah. Because yep. um, I get worried now because some allow you to do like tap <laughs> when they're allowed to tap credit cards and debit cards and stuff like that. You go, oh god, this is gonna be expensive. <laughs> so if you can just put a quid in it, that's good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So hopefully it's a quid wherever you see it. But yeah, if you see it, give it a go because it is really good fun. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, House of the Walking Dead, because that's what it's going to be called. Yes, it is, from now on. Uh, yeah. Uh, boss, that, that, that looks really good. Uh, there we go. We've covered arcade games as well now. I know. What if I, what if I could now write to Sega and ask them to send me a review, Daytona USA? <laughs> that's how it works, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Maybe. There you go. Send me a review, USA, the Daytona USA cab, please. Yeah, we just you know, talk them into ramping up their arcade production again and, and really getting back into it. That's what you should do. Sega Bass Fishing Arcade game. Come on. Come on, Sega. Get to it. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, it originally was. Fishing. So, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 
I know. So I want it back. Arcade fishing. Who would have thought arcade fishing could be one of the most enthralling, exciting games you could play? I know. I, I we talked about it in our episode one hundred special. <laughs> He's going to turn into a Sega fan cast again. <laughs> I know about how much we love the fishing mod. Oh, it's yeah, I love it. I love all that stuff. I, I might have something down the line related to some Sega stuff, but I'm going to keep keep shtum for now until I've got a little bit more detail. But yeah, yeah, there might be something coming along on, on that front. Yeah, excellent. That's it for games. Um, but I, I've not been playing much um, because I kind of got drawn in by those two games essentially and a little bit of Dungeon Golf as well um, but yeah so I think it's time to actually do some Q&A rather than going oh bugger might fit one in let's fit a couple in Stu why the hell not why the hell not so okay um, here's a good one if you could go back in time what year would you travel to Am I allowed to say and be really, really dark here and say 1980, late 1980, early 81, and have myself miscarried? Oh, wow. Now that is dark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I know. Um, oh, honestly, 77. Um, European Cup final. I'd love to go and watch that in person. Yeah. Nice. Um, as a Liverpool fan, yeah, 1977, I'd love to go and do that. Yeah, yeah, no, that would be good. Rome, yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah, um, yeah it's n- nothing. You can either have the really dark answer, or have to terminate my, myself in pregnancy, um, this whole Hitler situation, or or football, unfortunately. I, I, it's about as deep as it goes. <laughs> Because I could go with the, oh, I'd go back and invent Apple or something. I don't think I could add all that. Um, nah. I don't think I could, if, I don't want to be a multi-billionaire. I, I couldn't be that person. So, yeah, um, I'm the I'm the opposite of Bruno Mars, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, 1977, European Cup final. Let's have it. Awesome. Yeah, no, I don't. What about you? I don't know. I, I don't really, I don't really want to go anywhere back in time to be honest i mean i would like to although it would destroy my mind i would like to go forward in time like if i if somebody said like when you're on your deathbed all right you're gonna die um so do you want to see the future uh and it will probably destroy your mind i'd be like yeah go on then you know um because i'd like to see how it, you want to get fired by needles yeah no i got it yeah 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 exactly <laughs> So, but yeah, no, so uh, I don't, yeah, I don't really want to go back in time at all. I mean, I suppose if I, if I was forced to, I'd, I'd kind of, as long as I was like, okay, well, yeah, what are the parameters? Like if I go back to like the Jurassic or the Paleolithic era and, and see, because I'd love to see dinosaurs talking to, you know, Paleo Park, um, would I could it, start a start a dinosaur ranch back in like 65 billion years yeah, ago? Yeah, change, change history completely. Yeah. Or be riding dinosaurs now. Um, <laughs> could you? Could, oh, could you imagine if you went back to when you thought like dinosaurs were, and it was nothing, and it turned out there was a god after all? <laughs> yeah, God, that'd be so weird. Can you imagine no. if you lost that bet? That'd be mad. Yeah, I'd, I'd stay. Yeah, yeah, I'd stay. Then I'd go back to nineteen late nineteen eighty early eighty one and terminate the pregnancy. There you go, <laughs> because you found out the truth. No one could ever know. terminate the half dinosaur Brad that was going to appear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, God's will. No, the Jehovah's a riot. Oh, it's so weird. All yeah. Right. Um, Moving swiftly on. <laughs> <laughs> There's your title, the Jehovah's a riot. <laughs> that, that actually gets some people in. No, not having that, mate. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you about the Jehovah's Witness compound next week. Okay. Round the corner from us. Well, that'd be they've good. They've got an actual compound. Yeah, I'll tell you about it next week. They've got an actual compound. Ooh, nice. I, I'm sure it's one of those proper cultist compound with a gate on the front and everything. It's weird. Uh, but anyway, carry on. What's the next question? <laughs> I don't ask about the Jehovah's compound. Oh, well, here we go then. Uh, what is the worst <laughs> gift you've ever received? <laughs> okay, so I'm a big believer of no gift is a bad gift. Yeah. Oh, you're not. Um, by the way, you're not allowed to say you're kids. So, you know. No no, 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 I love my kids. Yeah. Honestly, they are the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I don't mean that in times of like cast off me. They are the best things. They've kept me alive. Um, but worst gifts, okay, I could put this down to two. And I say, I don't usually do gifts of bad. Um, but I'm going to mount my mum um, here. 
Um, my worst gift I ever received technically was a bicycle helmet for my nan. Um, okay. When I was, I want to say eight, seven or eight, it was for my birthday. Um, I got a bicycle, went out shopping with my nan because I had my BMX and everything. And I was like, oh, I love my BMX. I was, you know, that sort of age. Nan, can I get a BMX hat, bicycle helmet? She went, yeah, I'll get you a bicycle helmet. Got my bicycle, I'm really excited. Got home, mum, I want to go on my bicycle. Can I go on my bike? Look, nan's bought me a helmet. And mum goes, ah, oh, no, uh, you, you can't. Um, the shed's been broken into. Um, and your bike's been stolen. I was like, oh, no, I was devastated until I found out that, no, no, my boss BMX bike was then come back to me a few weeks later, having been resprayed by my mum because there was a bit of an insurance jobbery going on back, this was back in the <laughs> 80s. Oh, that is mental. That is such a good um, story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that also, this is what my mum's like. I love my mum. She, she is brilliant. Uh, the other time, I broke my, uh, done my ligaments on my ankle. I was in my teens. Um, and it was just before Christmas that I did it. And for Christmas, after I, I was laid up, couldn't do anything, my mum bought me a skateboard. Ooh, slap in the face. Slap in the um, face. Um, and then the worst one we got as a collective, as a family, this is again when I was still like living at home with my mum, my auntie goes, oh, you like films, don't you, Tom? I was like, oh, yeah, who doesn't? Oh, I've bought you some films, some DVDs. So, All right, okay. Uh, basically, she bought us a whole, or, or made a whole, do you know, like back in like the early 2000s, I would say, maybe even late 90s, where you got all the cam jobs were about. Yeah. Basically, she got a load of those on CD and said, gave them to us for Christmas. Oh, lovely. And it was like, and like, it was the one time I think we've all just gone, fuck is this? <laughs> and went, no, you can't do that. <laughs> That's the actual worst gift. My mum's ones were bad because they, but they create a great story to them and, and stuff like that. And I get why they happened at the time. And one of them, you know, the skateboard one wasn't my only gift at that Christmas. But yeah, she made out like it was my only gift. Um, as because it's like she likes pranking with gifts. She once bought me a Lewis Hamilton autobiography, though, and I didn't like Lewis Hamilton. So that's nice. where we're going with gift giving for my mum. That, that's yeah. very trolly. Um, yeah, she trolled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's where we go. So it all that all kind of like it's fun. It's a little bit traditional, I suppose. But yeah, getting some home burn cam job films on on video CD from your auntie at Christmas in a binder little thing was just, yeah, just what, that was just awful. But I say, on the whole, presents, any gifts, I think there's fault behind them. Whether it's a pair of socks or, or something someone thinks you might like, but you don't really. I, I think that it's always nice. Um, so, yeah. Oh. What about you, apart from that syphilis I gave? <laughs> well, that was a, a more of a New Year thing, wasn't it? Um, but, yeah. <laughs> You get carried away at the turn of the century. But, um, yeah, no, the worst one I got was probably... I mean, I've had some crap ones that I asked for, so that's on me. But the one that I didn't ask for is, like, a bit of context. I, my birthday's on Christmas Eve, so you know, people have to be very careful. If they want to live, they have to be careful to buy me separate presents or very specifically buy me an expensive gift that is obviously for both you know christmas and birthday but i prefer to get them separate anyway i got a combined gift from my auntie and uncle when i was about i think it was about seven or eight maybe nine um <laughs> which was a recorder as in the quote-unquote musical instrument um <laughs> <laughs> which I've always fucking hated. Like, I yeah. hate the noise they make. I hate... <laughs> it's just a noise. It's not music. No. I don't care how good you are on it. It's just it's noise. It's still just noise, isn't it? I, I prefer when you get a comb and a bit of, you know, greaseproof paper and, and do that <laughs> noise. Yeah. I prefer that noise. <laughs> the triangle is more of a musical instrument. Exactly. I like that sound. I like it. This I do not like. So yeah, that consumed an entire birthday and, and Christmas for me that year. And I hate them. So yeah, that was terrible. Um, yeah. But I suppose some of the ones that I asked for and that were a bit crap, you know, that, you know, that were on me um, were pretty rubbish as well. But yeah, no, that was the worst one that I didn't ask for. Definitely. Yeah. No, I'm with that. I do. Yeah. No, that's nasty. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. sure is. Oh, I've had him. I did have a recorder once. I don't think it was a gift. I think it was the musical instrument I was given to play at school. Um, and I just didn't want to do it, so I just made the worst noise possible. Good on you. Um, I tried playing it with my nose because obviously that's what you've got to do. Oh, absolutely. If you're going to get a recorder. Yeah. Well, the only thing that. And then the shared recorder. So yeah. someone, <laughs> or possibly even me as well, was had someone else's nose germs in their mouth. Yeah. Well, there's only one acceptable, well, two, well, yeah, one acceptable path that you can go with recorders. And that's that you pick it up, you try playing it with your nose, and then you snap it over your knee. Well, that's that's it. That's the that's all you're allowed to do. So, yeah. I go, you know. Why didn't you get me the flute? Precisely. That's nice. At least that's proper. Bloody penny yeah. whistle would have done. Anyway, right, we've, <laughs> we've hammered the the recorder enough now so <laughs> no we haven't we could we, do that at any time episode yeah, that, that, like yeah. yeah that could be a day's worth but um <laughs> next question um aside from necessities uh what's one thing that you could not go a day without coffee yeah yeah absolutely it's as simple as that coffee um i'm addicted i need it and i've realized i use that as an alternative to adhd medication um for 40 years pretty much so yeah coffee perfectly acceptable yeah yeah i'm sure um, yeah, doctors would agree it's my my biggest fear now going for it's not my biggest fear because we've done biggest fears before um but my big fear with with coffee is i've got a friend who's also adhd um, and she discovered late in life and she was also like a big like addicted to coffee and she's now on medication and coffee doesn't no longer has the desired effect oh um and it really like wires her now whereas before it was relaxing and yeah. that scares the life out of me i don't know what i'd do if coffee had that effect on me because it's literally my water intake as well <laughs> yeah. i don't drink enough water because again adhd autism water bleh hypocritical of me i tell my son off for not drinking enough water i get why he doesn't do it because i don't really drink enough water yeah. anywhere near uh but yeah I, that that's literally my liquid intake is coffee and if that has a negative effect i don't know what i'm gonna do um smack i think is the only answer really yeah yeah, yeah if i can't have coffee i think i will go to crack yeah definitely yeah it, it, i agree with you it's it's absolutely essential um for the day i I can't get through it without it the other thing is um so you should go, no, I, I know right. i wanted you to, i wanted you to answer the question about non-essentials and you then say coffee <laughs> <laughs> well, no. well yeah um what, what's inessential i can't go without i um, in the past you'd be able to say the internet but it's in it's essential now anyway for yeah. like doing anything pretty much um me Joe. it's me yeah me you can't go without me i suppose so your of, that's true your, your daily bit of bread yeah yeah oh. your daily bread oh it's like <laughs> give, is it daily bread i don't give know give us this day our daily bread yeah <laughs> there's our fred title <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very good um <laughs> yeah so yeah but no i ironically bread because i'm obsessed with bread i'm not sure if i've told this story before but um the very first time like one of those big kind of um you know landmark benchmark moments of when you're growing up is being able to go into town on your own you know with your friends kind of thing um and i went into town with friends from school well oh, you know fairly new friends because this is when i was 11 yeah. obviously high school um and yeah we all met up in town and and yeah obviously we're messing around and stuff and one of the big things was we've been given like pocket money to buy you know treats and stuff like that so everyone like obviously piled into the sweet shop and bought a load of sweets i bought a loaf of fresh bread <laughs> i brought bought an unsliced loaf of fresh bread <laughs> walked around town Fancy. eating it like to by taking off the crust and scooping out the middle and eating it I mean, it's fancy. It is. I'll give you that. It is not the way I ate it, but um, yeah. So that's <laughs> that's my level of obsession with bread. It's my most, yeah. It, it's very strange, but also very true. Oh, just, I do love just out the oven fresh bread, though. In all fairness, yeah. melted butter. Oh god, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, this wasn't even with oh. butter because I, I love it that much. But yeah, that's how weird I am. Mm. Yeah, when it's when it's fresh, fresh, fresh. It has. It's not a dampness, but. 
it is a dampness that just just works. It's this weird texture that I can't quite explain that you only get with just freshly baked bread. Yeah, it's you cannot replicate it. That's, it's that springiness that you get when it's it's just past being dough, but it's not yeah. over over the hill into like dry. You know, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, fantastic. Oh. You can't beat it. It's amazing. I did. I didn't realise we was going to have to do an over eight eats cast here, Stu. But oh. no, I'm getting a little excited. It has to be said. But, um, one more before we wrap up. Yeah, let's go for it. Um, go on then. Here's a good one, right? So, if you were a superhero, what power would you have? I don't know. Um, ooh. Mm. So, do I have to be a superhero? No, no, no. Excellent. Can I go for David Tennant's bring it all full circle manipulation techniques? Because oh yeah, not specifically to control a single person to do my bidding like that or anything like that evil, but imagine having that and then being able to go into the ear of the current prime minister or something like that and manipulate them into doing good or going to a billionaire and going look you don't need that many billions drop down to the one billion. It's all you need and spread the wealth and make them do it via their own choices because you've manipulated them like David Tennant, Kelly, Jessica Jones. That's, yeah, that, that. Yeah, that is pretty good. I mean, you could also just like say that you want Superman's powers and then pick those people up and throw them into the sun, which would also be very satisfying. But I like the whole, That's yeah. murder. Yeah. That's murder. I want to be a good person, too. And <laughs> yes, you're doing the get rid of the bad people. And I get that, right? That's fine. But then you're Dexter. And Dexter's cool. But yep. there's still some moral moral quabbles going on there. Um, so at least with that, you could. it's just all manipulation. Manipulation's fine, okay? <laughs> okay. Actual murder, maybe we draw the line a little bit. Gotcha. Okay, we know where your ethical um, boundaries are now. That's good to know. Yes. Yeah. What we do know is Stu's about to come up with reasons why he can murder people. So, Stu, what would your superpower be? <laughs> I would be a mass murderer. Actually, I could do that now. So, you know, yeah, why not? Um, no, I think, I think you know, it would be cool to have... It, like, if you had a group of superpowers, it'd be like Supermans, because then you could just do basically whatever yeah. you wanted and not worry about it. You know, the whole flying thing, not worried about being hurt, you know, all that kind of stuff. But... If there was one kind of like basic thing to have, it would be like super sight, which is sounds a bit boring, but I just being able to like glassy, <laughs> yeah, basically having telescopes <laughs> strapped to your head. Yeah, what uh, would be your superpower? Hardware glasses. <laughs> well, no, I just I think it'd be pretty cool just to be able to see anything you wanted at any distance, you know, whenever you wanted to. Um, it'd be really good. I, I know that's really weird, but I think it'd be quite cool. Yeah, no. The reason I couldn't be Superman, and I think the, I don't think many of us could be Superman, is I think the truest depiction of Superman is Homelander. Yeah. Because I think most people would turn into Homelander rather than Superman. You would, wouldn't you? You couldn't help yourself. Plus, I'd really want to know: could I clap my hands and make a person with super hearing go deaf and brain melt inside their <laughs> brain and make them die? Because yeah. who wouldn't want to test that ability out? True. True. Or explode. Oh, who's the one? I forgot. I forgot what her name is. But the one who can make people's heads explode. That's a cool superpower. Oh god, power. yeah, yeah. That's mental. That one. It's, it's a bit. Li- Do you know bit what? Limiting. Any of the vi- any of the they're all. I couldn't say any of the villains. There's no villains as such in in the boys. Do you know what? Put me in the boys. They're all vi- all of they're that. All villains. All of it. <laughs> all of their power. Even the good people. Yeah. Even the quote unquote good people are villains. Uh, apart from Simon Pegg, he's the only good person in it. Yeah. Huey's a bastard. Yeah. Huey's going to be the biggest bastard in that eventually. Starlight. He's going to turn into a homelander. Yeah. Starlight's okay, isn't she? You know, she, she, she's a bit manipulative at times and yeah. she uses her... Yeah, no, she, she's still not morally all like 100%. She's still got some darkness to her and stuff like that as well. She's probably the closest to a... a uh, a heroine hero type figure, but she's still there's ambiguity there, and they can take her places. Um, that's for sure. Uh, but Huey's gonna turn out to be the big, big bad, I reckon, in that uh, eventually. Could well be because he's gonna turn. Um, I want to start that from the beginning, actually. I'm gonna start that from the beginning because that was so good. But yeah, yeah. I'm either gonna be David Tennant or any of the people from the boys. Nice. <laughs> 
Ah, nice, nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I think that's all we got time for on that stuff today. Yeah. But yeah, very good. We started off with we started off with going, oh, these people are not nice and everyone should be nice to each other too. Uh, right. Hey, we want to be murderous superheroes. Yeah, too right. I think that brings it all about nicely. So do you know what, Stu? What? Like a good superhero. I don't know. That that's not even make sense. I'm just gonna shut up. <laughs> And that's why we use the I'm going to show up now thing. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bit... I should have used it right at the start, in all fairness. <laughs> yeah. My superpower will be making Brad mute. That's it. That's all it is. No, I'm only kidding. Um, or am I? Uh, yes, I am. No, I'm not. <laughs> I will show up now. Uh, so, yes, as usual, follow us on all the socials. Check out the website for our content and watch YouTube videos and all of our reviews and stuff like that. Join us on Discord if you'd like to chat. And until next time, as usual, stay safe and stay sane.